joining me now, Sean Phillips, Head of Health and Social Care at Policy Exchange. Sean Phillips, good morning. Morning, Lisa. Appreciate your time this morning. How thankful should we all be then on a day like today that the NHS has made it to 75 whole years and remains free at the point of use despite all those background problems? Yeah, indeed, I think it's a, an important day to reflect on what's been achieved, but also to have a sort of candid look to the future, to think really hard about the challenges ahead and how we're going to sustain the NHS for the next 75 years. The background uh, covers statistics like this, though. There's a record 7.4 million people in England currently waiting for elective treatment. It's claimed a third of British adults have found it difficult to access NHS services since the start of the pandemic. There's that data obtained exclusively by LBC revealing NHS England Trust have spent all that money on various agencies. So do you fear then the NHS might not make it to 100 years? Well, I think first turning to that um, that fascinating, striking um, reporting from from LBC on spend on agency staff and indeed on on external consultants. I mean, the first thing to say on that is that one of the reasons for that expend on agency staff is because of gaps in the road, gaps in the workforce. And so, one of the really welcome things. Um, has been the publication of that NHS long-term workforce plan policy exchange in a report we put out last year called Double Vision, called for a significant expansion in medical school places, which we were pleased to see reflected in the plan. And the critical thing also is that the government recognised in that the fact that actually you can make really significant savings to the bill, 10 billion is what they quote on that agency spend, if we were to effectively train and ensure that we've got a sustainable workforce pipeline for the future. So that's certainly cause for, for optimism. And I think the other thing that I would say is that there's a huge amount of things that we can do to really improve services as they stand today. So last week, Policy Exchange put out a report called Medical Evolution. It looks at how to improve that interface between primary and secondary care got a big waiting list as you say but far too many patients at the moment are feeling bounced around services you know they're having they're effectively going back to the gp for reassurance when they've got a got a long wait for for care um, in a hospital setting and we set out a series of practical measures in terms of really improving communication with patients improving communication indeed between clinicians introducing new technologies like support decision systems um, for clinicians and this is a lot there's a lot of things that we can think about to really transform services and improve them and, and they're the key things that we should focus on to sustain services for the for the future and the other thing to say is i think um, it's been really welcome to see the really wide-ranging debate that people are having about the ways that we can think longer term in our policy planning for healthcare services and that's beyond the nhs as well that's thinking about public health and thinking about social care as well where we know there are significant challenges that uh, there's an interdependency effectively of those areas with nhs performance well, yeah, and uh, presumably getting those doctor strikes uh, halted and resolved too would uh, help. So we can talk about that. Let's also talk about what Rishi Sunak unveiled in his 15-year plan for the NHS just last week. I wonder what you make of that. Uh, does it have the scope to fix those continual staff shortages and, and address recruitment, retention and so on? And whether indeed Labour might do better with a the service they, of course, created? So I think on the long-term workforce plan, it's really welcome. It's been a long time since there's been that sustained projection of the need of workforce in a clinical uh, sense. And so things like significant expansion in medical space is a really good thing. You know, it's a... We, there's a strong both ethical and economic case you know there are lots of really talented young people in this country who miss out on the opportunity to contribute to medicine because of the cap that there has been on places so we think that that's a, a sensible credible thing to do and in the, the economics of this makes sense too so we've talked about the economics already of reducing a reliance on agency staffing sort of to, to fill short-term um, uh, gaps in the rota um, but actually, in terms of contributions that these future doctors, nurses, healthcare professionals more generally are going to make um, as taxpayers is, is really significant. And that's and you know, so the economics of this makes sense. I think the thing to say that probably is missing from um, the sort of long term workforce planning that I think is really significant. And this is something um, that, again, is highlighted, I think, by the reporting that you've done in terms of spend on management consultants is around the analytical capacity that we have in the NHS. So there's often a debate, a debate about whether there are too many or too few managers in the NHS, uh, sort of unfair, um, you know, talk of pen pushes, etc. The point fundamentally, and I think the position that, that I would take and policy exchange would take, is about having the right people 
and the right number of them in the right place, fundamentally to do some of the big, really important transformative things we know we need to do, whether that's developing the hospital estate or the GP estate in terms of the buildings for the future, IT transformation programmes, things like this, so we actually have a much more efficient and indeed productive system. We actually need people who really understand these things, who um, are able to, you know, are able to manage effectively um, those programmes in an effective and efficient way. And we can't just rely on clinicians already in the system that are that are stretched to be able to do both as much as their their input sort of buy-in and engagement is critical too. So I think that's that's a really important piece of the longer-term planning around the workforce that's, that's critical. Yeah, indeed. And uh, just finally, as uh, headlines in various papers put it today, for example, the Times, Steve Barkley calls for evolution, not revolution. Evolution as the NHS turns 75. Whilst there are other rumblings, though, from the likes of Sajid Javid and even uh, Tony Blair, front of the Telegraph today, saying, you know, if you've got the money as a patient, uh, why not Q jump? Well, I think just to just reflect on, on what Sajid Javid set out yesterday in terms of calling for a Royal Commission. So the position fundamentally, which I, I completely understand he's making, is that he wants to depoliticise that question around how you fund and ensure the sustainability of our healthcare system moving forward. And I think that encouraging that type of candid, open reflection where heretical thoughts almost are allowed is really welcome. The challenge I think is going to be fundamentally though with taking that approach is that as soon as the, the findings would come in whenever they potentially would come in down the track it becomes political again. The short term sort of political headwinds will impact the ability to be able to implement and it will, you know, it will be a government, government, a future government of a particular colour or stripe that is going to be responsible for doing it. And if we look at past rural commissions whether that's on the House of Lords and indeed probably most relevant here on social care, actually, we haven't been able to see, even though there might be that consensus in terms of the principles of what we need to do, and even sometimes the policies, the implementation is very difficult when there's not the political will. So I think my, my worry or my cautionary note around a Royal Commission would be that you might set out, in, you know, the evidence base might be very strong for some pretty significant reforms, but the political will, if it isn't there, and indeed if the public are not bought in fundamentally to the thing, so it's not reflected in a manifest, set of manifesto commitments, things like that, I think it's going to be very difficult to change it. But candidly, as, as I said, I think... We, we really should welcome sort of this milestone for the NHS, a, a really open discussion about what is needed for the future. John Phillips, good to speak with you this morning. Thanks very much indeed. Head of Health and Social Care at Policy Exchange.